Okay, once I get back from this trip, we're getting some theme music. All right, hey Hexers, welcome to Tuesday. I actually just got off of another show, which is uh, the Uplink with Helium. Uh, if you're not familiar with Helium IoT, we just did a contest with them, IoT Without Limits, go check it out. We did a sweet uh, video with Peter Ma, the contest winner, using AI to figure out clean water. Super cool! Then I came out of the uh, studio and I found this package, which I have been eagerly awaiting. I have to give the Osh Park team hella props for this. They have, uh, I got my request in kind of late in order to get a bunch of PCBs for EMF camp where I'm going this weekend. It's in England. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to bring you lots of information and cool stuff from that. Um, and they managed to deliver this in like record time despite me being a jerk. <laughs> And I thank you so much, Drew and Lane and everybody, uh, all you cool people. <clears throat> if you're not familiar with Oshpark, it is a PCB manufacturing house, uh, open source hardware, everything on there basically you can share is open source. This is a really cool one by someone called Diode Red. Um, look at that, it's amazing. Ooh, there's all kinds of cool PCB art um, tutorials coming up now because it's becoming a huge thing with like DEF CON badges and whatever. Um, then we've got this cool little one featuring Prince Oshkat, who is their mascot. Let me zoom in on this a little bit more for you. Or rather focus, yeah. Don't hate me because I mix those two up all the time. <laughs> uh, ooh, super. Look, it's even got little like bubbles underneath there. That's so cool. You know, that's because there's copper and not copper underneath the solder mask here. Uh, and then there's bare fiberglass FR4 substrate here, the sort of beige stuff. And then this is uh, copper, which is enig coated, which is why it looks gold, because it's coated in gold. And then the white is. Um, uh, silk screening on top of that, or on top of the solder mask. So cool. Uh, and then I just love, you know, physical cool stuff. And this is um, a PCB of me that Andrew Soa created using a couple of silly pictures from <laughs> the world. I love it. It's so cool. These are all done by Osh Park. Oh no, there goes Prince Oshcat. I should really just solder that together. Anyway, so today's package, I'm going to unbox. I'm really excited about this one. Um, I'm working on getting like a for reals logo for Charmware, uh, which is my modular tech jewelry system. Basically, you link PCBs together in a chain and you attach, you know, batteries and uh, and LEDs and stuff to them and haptic motors and whatever you want, uh, and then you can wear it. Eee. Oh boy, come out! Oh, oh, that's how this box works, huh? Okay. And oh, I'm so excited! I get to bring these to EMF camp! Oh boy, look! So I got a medium run of these, which means that uh, I was able to get them all fully routed out. Uh, let me grab the previous iteration, actually, because there's some cool comparisons to be made here. Where's the rest of them? Uh, uh, I put them somewhere weird. I don't know. Um, so... I really put those somewhere weird. I have no idea. I have some like little examples kind of wired up that I was going to show you. Nope, no idea where those are. <laughs> so I had some made before of a previous version that were done in half height, which I kind of liked, but it also made them kind of sharper and less comfortable to wear, even though they're lighter. Um, and this has, uh, you know, half the thickness of a regular PCB. Um, Look at edge on, yeah. And so these are the regular thickness. At that time I was calling them PC beads um, because it's basically like, uh, you know, creating a, a fun version of circuits for people who like to create beaded jewelry. And this is the old version of the Dyson. These are named after uh, astronomical things. So for example, this is a star. Uh, it can take, you know, a, a surface mount resistor, surface mount LED in 1206 style, size. It can take a through hole resistor across here. It can take a reed switch across here and all kinds of other cool stuff. Um, these holes are for, for strings to hold it in place. Um, and then this is the Dyson, uh, named after the Dyson sphere, which captures the energy from a sun, a star, to uh, 
power of civilization. <laughs> but um, so this is the battery one, and it has a spot for a CR2032 coin cell battery holder. Uh, however, this is pretty large, right? Even though it's flat, it's large. Um, and so these ones are full height again, but I have... Oh, this is so much smaller! This is great! Uh, yeah, I, I switched from 2032 batteries to CR1220s, which are rather smaller, and I don't have any just yet. I've ordered a bunch uh, to take with me, and hopefully TSA lets me through with those. But um, basically this, yeah, it, um, it's a different kind of battery that is smaller, and so I was able to do a, a different uh, footprint here. And part of this, the purpose of this project is to teach myself PCB design. Um, so I definitely had some, I mean, this is, this is not super elegant, but I think it looks really cool, honestly. So this is the new Dyson with a 1220 uh, size battery, uh, both three volts. So the positive contacts are on the outside. Um, and so one of those links to this place to solder to. And then the ground contact is in the middle and that links to this other one. So that you get this kind of symmetrical design, uh, rotationally symmetrical. Uh, and then it's not quite symmetrical because of the cool background uh, texture things. Kind of like how those bubbles are done on on the Prince, Oshka Prince Oshkat spaceship, see? Uh, same kind of idea. Uh, so neat. And so yeah, this is the new Dyson and it's got a little sort of placeholder logo on there for Charmware. Oh, this is so cool. I'm really excited about this, guys. Oh man. I hope you're uh, getting some vicarious excitement because that's all I'm good for right now. Um, I leave tomorrow. I'm gonna be there in, in England on, you know, soonish after that and um yeah and then after that i go to music tech fest in sweden so if the in stockholm actually yeah if there's any cool stuff or cool people we should check out and talk to then uh yeah send us there drop me a line alex at hackster.io oh yeah what i wanted to show you was the lack of mouse bites so mouse bites are um oh wow these are so much i tried to make these smaller too while uh maintaining the same uh, footprints. So notice that it has the same stuff on the bottom, uh, but it's just a little bit smaller. It's a little bit more crowded, but I think it should be just fine. Um, cool. Mouse bites are what you get when you get PCBs like this. Um, they've been on a panel together with a bunch of other PCBs and uh, when you break them apart, they have these little things to hold them in place. Uh, and then you get these little nibbly guys, mouse bites. Um, and these don't have those because if you order above a certain number of PCBs in a certain run from Oshpark, you choose a medium run and you can hit them up and be like, hey, can I get these fully routed out? Uh, and if you look, I don't have to break them apart or anything. They've just been smoothly cut out. So these are so much classier. Oh man. Plus they seem like, I think maybe they changed their finish or something because if you look at Oshka again, like the old ones have this matte finish and I noticed that the half height ones have a more sort of glossy, almost translucent finish. Um, which is beautiful. I like them both, honestly. Like, matte black PCBs are some of my favorites. Uh, I like that this is also a more bluey color, of course. <laughs> Welcome to Hackster. We talk about the aesthetics of PCBs all day. <laughs> but it's important. If I'm making something that's meant to be sort of wearable, like jewelry style, uh, it's important for it to be aesthetically pleasing. So I'm really happy with how these came out. I'm excited to try out. Uh, oh yeah, the other package that was waiting for me outside the office. Oh, this is so good. What a good day. Uh, I was expecting to have to hang out here until like 9 p.m. for packages or something, but I also got um, a shipment. Uh, so this is uh, how my LEDs came. I ordered a bunch of them. They are in this anti-ESD bag. 
anti-electrostatic discharge. Comes with silicone gel so that it's not going to get all moist. <laughs> um, I should just take all the silicone gel packets that I have and put them in with my uh, PLA filament. Um, this basically tells you how... Uh, whoa. <laughs> I guess just how the, the chemicals are distributed and like if it is uh, safe. I'm always curious about these, um, but I guess it's detecting levels of this dangerous chemical and you want it to not be pink. Ooh, I don't know. Or something. It's a chemical indicator. It's like a pH strip for, for stuff. I don't know. Uh, and then my little LEDs came in this... Uh, strip tape. So I'll just peel off that plastic layer and like pull them out. I got a bunch of little plastic baggies so that I can package these up for people uh, to take away. <laughs> yes, they're going to be a giveaway. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, it'll be a lot of cutting individual LEDs. Ooh boy. Hmm. Well, that'll be interesting. I probably can't cut each individual one and have them stay in the strip, so I'll have to figure out some kind of a workaround for that. Um, and then the other thing that I have here is a roll of battery holders. Now, here's the thing. This might not work out because I didn't double check um, whether or not I could get the same type of battery holder that I used for the footprint on here. So, uh, whereas this has two positive contacts on the outside and one ground contact on the inside, these have, instead, one positive and one ground on opposite sides. And that is suboptimal <laughs> for our application. So you pop the battery in there, right? And then this is going to be your negative side, ground pole. Uh, and then this is going to be your positive which means that, yeah, this doesn't work. If I do that, it'll just be two positive contacts. But what I could do, maybe, is, uh, man, for future iterations, I could just put another through hole here. And it would no longer be symmetrical, but I could probably work it out so that it's like a, a triangle or something. Um, and then I'd be able to have three separate contacts you could solder either to one of the outside positives and the center ground, or in this case, just to use that as a positive and that as a ground. That's good for future reference. Um, in this case, I'll just have to do some weird little solder hacks, uh, but that's what iteration is for. This is what the joy is of, uh, of learning about this. I also noticed that um, this has some little nubbins on the bottom to help it be seated. Be seated. <laughs> uh, properly in the PCB, which is not compatible with my PCB, because uh, I didn't even know that was a thing. But a little sandpaper or filing or even just maybe a side cutter should take care of that. Can I do that with this? Let's see. Ha! Just use these. Uh, problem apparently solved. Yeah, that's its flush now. Cool. So, all right, problem number A has been fixed. Problem number B is just going to be like, all right, I will give people some little wires or something and we'll figure out how to make this work. Um, I'll probably end up just bending this up. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so there are my new PCBs. I got 120 of these and 100 of these, I think, in order to meet the medium run requirement.